In this video, we will learn how to select and uh, transform, uh, meaning uh, reposition or move and rotate and scale uh, the selected game object using the Unity uh, UI, uh, like so. So this is the movement and we could apply rotation and also the scale and the scale could be applied even scale or a uh, uh, scale for each axis differently like so and also we could do the transformation using the local uh, axis or global axis like so to start i have a number of 3d game objects so i have a playing cube and sphere over here and i have materials inside materials folder assigned to them and two extra material one is highlight one is selection i assign a magenta color to it but feel free to have any colors uh, you desire and we'll use these later and uh, so uh, first select the game object that you would like to be selectable uh, later on the runtime and uh, add a, a tag a selectable tag to them so we don't have that tag so we add the tag selectable so click the plus and then selectable with capital s and select the game object that you want to be selectable in the runtime in my case they are the cube and the uh, sphere and assign the selectable uh, uh, name uh, or tag to them. Next, we can start building the UI. Uh, so right click UI and I'll start with adding a panel. There it is. And uh, we'll make sure the pivot would be zero on the X, one on the uh, Y, and the anchor is uh, set to top left and the position uh, to uh, zero, zero, and the width to be 820. And the height would be 265, somewhere around that. And we'll ch just change, uh, I'll just press F so we could zoom into it. There you go. And I'll change the background color to be a uh, dark gray and also change the alpha to be full 255. And I'll change the panel name to panel underscore background. Next, we'll, uh, we'll uh, add a text. So right click and UI text mesh pro and import text mesh pro essentials. And we'll name, rename the text to text underscore axis and then uh, change its uh, pivot to zero on the X, one on the Y, and the anchor to top left, so like what we've done to the panel, and the position uh, on the X would be 10, and on the Y would be minus 13, and the width would be 225, and the height would be 60, and then uh, we'll ride axis and we'll make sure the font is 36 the font size next we will create ui drop down so ui and then select drop down and we'll rename it to drop down underscore axis and then similarly the pivot would be zero on the x one on the y and the anchor would be top left and then the position on the x would be 583 and on the y would be minus 18 and the width would be 225 and the height would be 50 and uh, we'll go to add options so we could delete we only have two options so we delete one of them so in option a would be global and in option b we'll add local and the uh, we could move to the label we select the label and we change the font size to 36 and then uh, we go to the arrow select the arrow under the drop down axis and uh, we change the position x to minus 18 and the width to 50 by 50 and uh, uh, we also move to the template viewport over here so expand it and select the uh, uh, viewport and then in the viewport we could select the content and change its height to uh, 40 and we could also expand the content select the uh, item and change its height to 40 as well and then uh, the item also we expand it and we select the item check mark and change its width and height to be 40 and lastly the item label we uh, change its uh, left to be 30 and its font size to be 36. that's it for the uh, drop down so next we'll create an empty game object and we'll name it axis 
and make sure to reset its transform. So we have 00 on the position and then we could move it up under the canvas and then we will select maybe under the panel and then we will select both the uh, text axis and drop down axis that we created and drag them to be children of the axis. So we have the axis as a group now, which we could turn on and off. Next, I'll duplicate the axis group by selecting it and pressing control D on the keyboard and I'll change its name to position and we'll expand it and we don't need the drop down here. So I'll just delete that and we'll change the text axis to text position in the new group and we'll just move it uh, down to around here and then make sure the text position width is 225 and the height is 60. That's fine. Then uh, we'll duplicate the text position in the position group by pressing control D and we'll change that to text underscore X and we'll move that to about 250 on the X and uh, we'll change the text to X and we'll change the width to 35 and we'll keep the height to uh, 60. Uh, next, we could uh, also add inside the position group an input field. So right click UI and then select input field and we'll name the, we'll rename it to input, input field underscore X and uh, we select it and we make sure the pivot is on the X is zero and on the Y is one and the width to be 150 and the height to be around 40. I'll just drag it up so we could see it. It's around here. I'll put it next to the X around here. And then uh, I will expand it, select its text area. And uh, under, we select the text by expanding the text area and make sure that the font size is uh, 36 and the alignment to be on the middle vertically. So we'll select this option. And uh, inside the uh, input field settings, we'll make sure that the uh, content type is a decimal number. And I'll just change the text position here from axis to position. And then I'll select uh, both the text uh, X and input field X by pressing, holding the control key on the keyboard. So while they're both selected, I press control D to duplicate them. And then we'll move the duplicate to the right, like so. And then we'll change the text underscore X to underscore Y and input field from X to Y as well. And select the text Y and change it from X to y. And similarly, I'll drag, uh, select both the input uh, field, uh, the text y and the input field y, and together and press the control D to duplicate them, change, uh, I'll select them both, I'll move them to the right as well, like so, and change the text uh, underscore y to underscore z, and the input field to input field z. And then we'll select the text Z and change it to Z. And I'll just realign them a little bit. So I'll select the text Z and input field Z, move it a little bit to the right, and then select the text Y and input Y, move it to the left a little bit to give it some space. And then the input X and text X and move them a little bit to the left, like so. Let's look all right. Then I'll select all the position group, which include everything, and drag it a little bit down. And this is the advantage of having them in a group. You could adjust them later. Now we could select the whole uh, position, I'll just collapse them, position group and press Control D to duplicate it. And we will rename the new group to rotation and we'll move it on the Y down a little bit to around here. Yeah, here it looks fine. And then we'll change them quickly. Text position will be changed to text rotation. And from position, we'll change that to rotation and we'll keep text X, Y, and Z as they are. And now that's done, we'll copy the whole group to make the scale, so control D, and we'll change that to scale. And I uh, just need here, uh, so I'll just move it down so we could see where is the scale, I'll move it around here, and just make sure the text rotation will change to text. Uh, actually, we don't need, we're going to replace that text rotation with something else, so I'll just delete it. We'll need a drop down here. So we already uh, built a drop down under the axis group, so I'll just select that, hold, uh, select it and hold control D on the keyboard to make a duplicate. Then I'll just drag it to be under the scale, uh, under the scale, sorry, to be child of the scale, like so. And I'll just drag it up like here and we'll change it, its name to drop down scale. And now we'll just need to move it around here like so and move it down to match the things we have here, around here, okay? And uh, we'll uh, so, uh, select it and uh, and we'll just change its uh, options from global to uh, the, the option A would be uh, even scale and the other option to be just a scale. 
And yeah, I think the UI is done initially. So next we'll be creating the script. So under the assets, I'll create a new folder. We'll name it scripts. And inside that folder, we'll create a new C sharp file. And we'll name it transform UI. And we'll also create an empty game objects to hold that script. So I'll just create empty. We'll name it similarly transform UI. And then I'll drag the script and drop it into the new game object, select it to make sure it's there. And I'll double click to open it in Visual Studio. So I added the C sharp code here and I'll put a link in the description to it's a GitHub link that contains all the code over there and you could download that and use it. And once you have the script here, control S to save and we go back to the editor. Inside the editor, we select the game object that the script is attached to. And I think there is an error. Oh, I misspelled transform to transform. So sorry about that. Transform UI. Okay. And so if we, uh, so if we select the game object, now we'll need to assign the public variables that is needed. So first it's need the material. We go to the materials. I've created a new material, two materials, one for highlight, one selection. You could select any material you like. So I'll drag the highlight material there and uh, sorry, the selection material there. And it's required the input position X. So we'll go by the position and uh, that's input uh, field X So position X. We'll drag it here. And similarly for the Y, drag it and for the Z, drag it here. And now it's require the rotation. So we'll expand the rotation input field X. We'll drag it here. Input field Y, we'll drag it here. And input, input field Z is here. And then we'll go to the scale group. And similarly, uh, we get the, what it's required, scale X, input scale X, which is this field X here. And the Y is there and the Z is here and then the axis drop down uh, game object which is under the axis group over here and this is the drop down so we'll just drag it here and the scale drop down which is under the scale and this is the scale drop down we'll put it here next we need to assign methods to the input field so we'll go to the position we'll select input field x and go down and to the on end edit we click plus and drag the game object to which, to which the script is attached over here and then access its uh, methods and it would be set position x set pos x and similarly we'll do it for the input field y on end edit plus drag the game object and select set pos y and input field Z on end edit plus drag the transform UI and go to set pos Z. And that's for the position. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for the rotation, assign methods for its input field. So we'll select the input field on end edit as well, plus drag the transform UI and access its method. It will be set rotation X and input field Y similarly. Set rotation Y and input field C plus drag the game object or the script and set position rotation Z. And next would be the scale input field X on end edit plus drag the script and then would be set scale X input field Y drag it and set scale Y and Z on end edit. set scale C. Next, we need to assign methods to the drop downs. So we'll start with the axis drop down, drop down axis. And on value change, we hit the plus button and then drag the game object that contain the script and access the script transform UI. And we will select on axis drop down change method that we have in the script. And similarly for the scale, we select the drop down scale on value change plus drag the game object that has a script and access the script and we'll select on a scale drop down change. So I'm going to save and then hit the play.
and in the play i'm just gonna change the resolution to full hd and oh that shift happened so not to worry because we have the uh, everything in a group so i could just select uh, these groups axis position rotation and everything and just move them to where they should be like so and now if i play again it fits in the place and i could select the game object each game object change its position like so change its rotation like so and change the scale and we'll change to even or not even scale and also we could shift between local and not local so that's why i bring it down and and yeah and we'll change from local to global again so we could control everything or put it back to the way it was if we want to like so And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this.